given where the market is today, one of the questions I get is, is it too early, is it too late? How should I be thinking about alternatives? And, and to me, now is exactly the time people should be thinking about alternatives. You know, if, you're, if an advisor or a client is investing, looking in the rear view mirror, they're saying, hey, why do I need alternatives? I've had above average returns, below average volatility, life is great. But when you look through that windshield and anticipate what might be coming up around the corner, I think it speaks to some of the needs that alternatives can provide, whether it's cushioning against a declining equity market or rising interest rates. There are a number of different things that alternatives can do, and I think advisors and their clients should be proactive thinking about what they can do and putting them in their portfolio now so if something happens, they're in the portfolio, it can actually help. One of the biggest challenges with alternatives is the lack of a common definition around what encompasses alternatives, what, what qualifies as an alternative. You know, is a REIT an alternative? Some places it is, some places it isn't. And I think that feeds into a bigger issue of just confusion around what they are, how they work, how they fit, which really gets to the need of education. And so I spend a lot of my time, and I know other uh, firms in the industry have been spending a lot of time trying to educate advisors about alternatives, setting reasonable expectations about what they can expect from the different types of alternatives, and helping provide them with a roadmap on how they can navigate this confusing universe and align them with specific client investment goals. That's what we try to do. We organize the universe in five different baskets, with each basket representing a specific client goal. And I think that's a very good way to approach it, based on what the client's trying to achieve, and then here are the tools that can help the client get there. The common question that I get uh, from advisors is, how much should I invest, and where should that allocation come from? So what, what we tend to see is anywhere between 5 and 30% get allocated to alternatives, and I think most firms advocate about 15%. Uh, on the low end, I don't, I don't think you want to go too low because it, at, at some point, if you have 1% in alternatives and you get everything right, you know, is it really going to make a difference? So um, we'd say kind of mid-teens is what, is what we typically see. And then in terms of funding the allocation, the most important thing is to have a thought process and have a rationale why you're doing it. I don't like the lazy approach. We're going to take half from equities and half from fixed income. I like it if you do it on a risk-based approach. Uh, uh, um, risk-based way where you look at the risk of what you are allocating to, the type of alternative, and if it's equity-like, then take away from equities. If it's bond-like, take away from bonds. To me, that makes a lot of sense. Or if you just want to be a little bit simpler, take proportionally away from stocks and bonds. So if you're going to allocate 10% to alts, take 10% of your equities away, 10% of your fixed income away to fund that allocation.